So what do I do? I played loud music and I deafened a generation. I'm tattooed and I was pierced and way before all the people were doing this thing. Now it is commonplace. Then, 20 odd years ago, it was unusual and it was very uncommon. You can see by the holes in my ears. They are not from uh, fighting in Afghanistan, Astaghfirullah. Uh, unfortunately, they are from my own stupidity. But we do these things and we, do, and we live with the consequences. Would you like to just to show me a bit of your chest? I could see some tattoos in your neck. Oh, uh, uh, it's, this will be difficult. But if I say that the tattoos go from here right the way across and down. No problem, there's no aura there in any way. So could um, just show me your neck a bit. Oh. Uh, That's all. Wow. MashaAllah. I understand that you were ha half Irish mm. and that, that the father side, subhanAllah. Let me just take a. Subhanallah, <laughs> la ilaha illallah. Everywhere. You could imagine what such a, what a person he was when he was at that time. Now, with the moment, I can just say to the brother that he had some light in his face because of the light of the hidayah, the nur of the Islam, the guidance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Kul huwallahu ahad allahu sumad. لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يقله كف والنهد. They weren't expecting that, mashallah, from you. The way you sound, mashallah. Mashallah, tabarak Allah, tabarak Allah. This changed my life. Yeah, subhanallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Today, while I was wandering in the Isle of Wight. A uh, person told me about there was a masjid and a mosque in this place, which is called Newport. And alhamdulillah, I managed to get to the masjid and I met some of the brothers. One of the brothers that's really captured my attention, and I would like you to meet this brother. He is called Brother Abdul Malik. Uh, you could see, mashallah, from the way that he looks, he's a white person, blonde person, mashallah. But there is something very f sort of fascinating about the brother. And he didn't mind me recording him that he comes from a background which I would like Abdul Malik to talk about. So go ahead, Abdul Malik, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ana ismi Abdul Malik Jamal Khanif. I came to Islam, inshallah, 24 years ago. Uh, before this, I was uh, a heavy metal punk musician. Um, I grew up, had a good education, but I was rebellious. I was like a a human version of Iblis, in the way that I rebelled. I would not bend my neck to anything. I questioned everything I was taught. I questioned history. I questioned that there was history and there is his story. There are truth and there are lies. And I rebelled against uh, the British way of, uh, of everything. Oh, I never drunk. I never did these things. But I, used to, I thought I will rebel against the system, against the governments that I think are unfair. I will do it through music. Alhamdulillah. So I did uh, music that um, criticised the government, criticised the society I lived in, thinking this would also make me happy. Happiness doesn't come from the outside, happiness comes from within. And now no, happiness as, as water, as life itself, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the time I thought I could make myself happy with, through the music. I thought following my own ideas and the ideas of others would uh, make Islam, uh, would make uh, you know, my life complete. So what do I do? I played loud music and I deafened a generation. I am tattooed and I was pierced and way before all the people were doing this thing. Now it is commonplace. Then 20 odd years ago it was unusual and it was very uncommon. You can see by the holes in my ears. They are not from uh, fighting in Afghanistan, Astaghfirullah. Uh, unfortunately they are from my own stupidity. But we do these things, and we, do, and we live with the consequences. Would you like to just to show me a bit of your chest? I could see some tattoos in your neck. Oh, it's, uh, it's, this will be difficult. But if I say that the tattoos go from here, right the way across and down. No problem, there's no aura there in any way. So could um, just show me your neck a bit. Oh. That's all. Wow. MashaAllah. I understand that you were ha half Irish, mm. and that, that the father side, subhanAllah. Let me just take a... Subhanallah, <laughs> la ilaha illallah. Everywhere. You could imagine what such a, what a person he was when he was at that time. Now at the moment I can just say to the brother that he had some light in his face because of the light of the hidayah, the nur of the Islam, the guidance. Yeah. Or the darkness of that heavy metal, what he said. It was satanic way, wasn't it? 
And yes, I would say it was. I would also say that it was d done through anger, anger out, uh, uh, for various reasons. Anger at society, anger at things that I didn't understand, anger at uh, that there must be more in life than just property, money and health and uh, wealth. Uh, these things are, uh, everybody says, this is the meaning of life. Uh, I've always thought there was a God, and I always asked where he was. I looked at every ism. I had a good university education, but I, you know, I, I, I argued against everything. Mm, sure. And at the end of the day, I looked at Christianity, and they were saying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son, and I could not accept this. For if Allah needed a son, that would mean he has a, a, a weakness. He, ha he is in need of an heir. He, uh, if you have a son, you're going to die, he takes over. Why do you need this if, if he's all sustaining and all powerful? So this did not make sense. I looked at the Hinduism and they uh, worshipped the statues. And I said to one, if I break your statue, will your, will your, will your statue come and hurt me? I didn't even know about Islam. And he said, you know, it would be a terrible thing. So if I throw your statue on the floor, it will kill me. I thought this is ridiculous. It is a nonsense. <laughs> I looked at Jewish, Jewish religion, I thought, well, I can't be this, because this is not just a race, it's a race uh, religion, it's a race as well. And I'm not of that race, so how can I join something I'm not a part of the club? It didn't make sense either. I thought, Allah's, uh, I thought God created everything, not just one people. I looked at all these different philosophies, Marxism, ism, schism, schism and ism. And at the end of the day, all they are is man-made, manufactured, man made by man for man's ego. <laughs> and this I did not understand. Uh, a long time ago now, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, I was walking along Kensington High Street and a brother had a leaflet mm. and he was doing a very early version of Dawah. There was no Dawah 20 odd years ago. There was very few uh, Muslim reverts. I don't like the word convert. Uh, convert is to change. To revert is to go back. I have gone back to what my natural inclination should have been in the first place. There is no room for a convert. So I, um, I, I took the leaflet and I saw the word Islam and I thought, what is this thing? Whenever I was very little, my grandmother, because I grew up with my grandparents, took me um, to uh, Hyde Park and I used to see Arabic graffiti on the, on the wall. And I used to like, uh, you know, the script. I used to like the, 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 the uh, and I used to wish I could understand what it said. Somewhere deep down inside, that must have stayed with me. Because oh. when I got this, 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 this leaflet and it said Islam on it, I wanted to check this out. Then there were very few books on Islam. Uh, I found one, and it was uh, Guram Salwa's Belief and Teaching in Islam. In its first edition, it's now in its ninth or so edition. It was very primitively, you know, a primitive edition then. And I read it. And I was, Alhamdulillah, I saw this script again. And I thought, ah. So it's this religion that has the script, the script that you know, spoke to me from a, a young child that I thought, what is this thing? I was good at art, and I thought the script was beautiful. And, it, I, and, and of all scripts, it is the most beautiful in the world. And I looked at this thing, and I read, and I read, and then I read one thing. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. قل هو الله هو أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يأكله كفوا نهدا. They weren't expecting that, mashallah, from you. The way you sound, mashallah, mashallah, tabarak Allah, tabarak Allah. This changed my life. Yeah, subhanallah. And you know the meaning of it, mashallah. To say that Allah is one. Yes. To say that. Anything that has a creator has to have, uh, is a creation has to have a creator. You don't have multiple creators for, a, uh, for something. If you have an architect, you have multiple architects. They all have in fighting, they all fall apart. Excellent. You have to have unity, ikhlas. That's right. To say Allah is one, the absolute. He has to be absolute. If there's not absolution, if there's not completeness, then he is partial. If he is partial, he is not the Lord of all. So he cannot be the Lord Creator. He begets none. Of course, we are his creation, separate from him. Intact as a creation, but separate in our creation. He doesn't need a son, he doesn't need daughters, wives, or all the clutter that we have on earth. And nor is he begotten. How can he be made of people or of something else? If something created him, that must be more powerful, therefore that must be Allah. So that had an impact on you? And like unto him, there is nothing. This is what had the, uh, the impact. Right. Because to say, unlike unto him, in the whole universe, 
Nothing in like. the whole of everything, we can only see as far as our galaxy with a Hubble telescope, we can see a uh, uh, crab nebula like or whatever. Quantum. This is as far as we can go. Now, beyond that, how many universes are there? And beyond that, how many universes are there? And the seven heavens, etc., etc. If there is nothing within the light years and thousands of millions of light years, there is nothing equal to him, and there is nothing like him, then he is Lord of all. And if he is Lord of all, then what am I doing standing on my feet? I must be on my face. Because he put me here, therefore it should be gratitude. How did you embrace the shower? Am I going to have just to cut it short because of no. that? Ten minutes is going to finish. Very quickly. How did you embrace, I mean, when you took no. the shahada, did you go to a masjid or? Uh, there was nobody around to ask. I didn't want to ask uh, a lot of the brothers in the street because there was people walking around. Then there was no converse, there was no literature of Islam. There was no little dawah tables out with the take a leaflet brother. There was nothing. So I thought, you, 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 you're complaining about this, aren't you, at the moment? You're saying you, sh you should have had that. You I should have, have had that. Yes. And it shouldn't have been partialized to a community. You That's should right. not ghettoize Islam. That's right. You can't put a box around Allah. It is either Allah is everywhere, or he, or you as a, as a people are putting him in a box. Allah with his, knowledge is every, uh, with his knowledge is everywhere. No. Yeah, not with himself. himself no, not is with a double. his knowledge, with his ilman and with his hikmah. Excellent. Uh, you're talking about religion, you can't box religion, Islam, and it's a box. It has no. to be for everybody. Humans put boundaries, there is no boundaries. There's no Allah. boundaries, of course. And so therefore, when I looked at this thing, I thought, well, where am I going to go? So I looked through the phone book. Yes, in those days there were phone books. It's not, there was not a one-to-one, a one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-one-